Hello and welcome to Brain Power, short interviews from UT Austin's Human Dimensions of Organizations program, which works to apply both the humanities and the social and behavioral sciences to organizational context. I'm Amy Ware, the program's director. Today, Dr. Art Markman is with us. Art is the founding director of HDO. He's the Annabelle Arian Warsham Centennial Professor in Psychology and Marketing here at UT. Now he serves as the executive director of the university's IC Squared Institute. Thanks for being here. Good to be here, Amy. So Art, in the last decade, you've written several books aimed at broad audiences. These include Smart Change, Habits of Leadership, and Bring Your Brain to Work. Can you describe your academic work before the shift to a wider audience? Yeah, my, my focus, I'm a cognitive psychologist. I study the way people think. And a lot of my focus early on was on how people uh, use similarity to understand how to categorize things, how to make decisions, and, and how to use this information about comparisons generally in the way that we think. Uh, that led me to also do a lot of work on human motivation and reasoning abilities. And, uh, and, and that, was, that was my focus for, for a long time. Uh, really until I uh, started also to think about how this work applies just outside of the context of doing research. And, you know, why, why did you decide to make that shift when you started thinking about that application? You know, there were, there were several intersecting factors. Part of it was that the National Science Foundation every few years would decide that they wanted to cut funding for the for the social and behavioral sciences. And I felt like somebody had to explain to them why all of this research matters. And I figured, why not me? Uh, so that was a part of it. You know, a part of it too is when you study topics like decision-making and reasoning and motivation, it doesn't seem like that far a leap to go from the research to how people might use that research. And so it seemed like a natural extension of the kinds of things that I was doing. And, and the more that I got engaged with it, the more that I realized both that it was fun to do, but also that it often led me to think a little bit differently about the kinds of research that I was working on. Well, that brings us to HDO, right? And you founded HDO in 2011. And how has the program affected your scholarship, perhaps some of your teaching, perhaps your broader understanding even of the world? You know, I think it's had a couple of influences. One is that when you start to present the work that you do in a, in a broader context to think about how it applies, you have to go beyond the very narrow questions that you're forced to ask when you're trying to contribute to a literature. Because the, the leading edge questions in any field are often quite narrow. But the application of work really requires thinking about a lot of context, about, about how does the findings, the one set of findings relate to many others, and then how does that actually apply across a wide variety of circumstances? Uh, psychologists tend to study college sophomores, but you can't only think about college sophomores when you're worried about how you might apply something in the workplace. And so that was one piece of it. The other thing though, for me in particular was, uh, as a psychologist who had a broad interest in the liberal arts, but not always a tremendous amount of depth in many of the fields, one of the things that it gave me a real appreciation of was the degree to which all of the fields that are part of the liberal arts, the humanities, social and behavioral sciences, really do add up to a set of approaches that provide a lot of insight into the way that, uh, that humans act in, in lots of circumstances, including workplaces, and certainly uh, when I transitioned from teaching uh, only in the master's program to also teaching in our undergraduate program and actually began to try to draw insights from history and literature and philosophy to some of these approaches, it gave me a deeper appreciation of the way that many different fields have approached similar problems. And uh, do you feel it's important for other faculty in not just psych, obviously, but other disciplines to bridge their academic and public audiences and why? Yeah, I, I think it's incredibly important for people to, uh, to think about the implications of the work that they're doing and the work of their field 
uh, more broadly for for the way that that people in general interact. For one thing, there's a lot of aspects of, of that, that uh, a lot of insights that we get from our own fields that we think are are just universally understood, and I think they're not. I think that having spent as much time thinking about the human condition as as many of my colleagues have, uh, we actually have insights that that many people may not share and would benefit from hearing. So I think there's there's real value in sharing that perspective. And I really can't express enough how much it's enriched my own work and my own understanding of the world to, to, to do this kind of engagement, particularly when you think about the, the students that we get in our master's program, the students that we get in, in our continuing and professional education classes, they want to apply the, the, what they learn when we teach as quickly as possible and they are filtering this through a lifetime of experience. The kinds of questions that they ask often make you take a real step back and think very carefully about the kind of work you're doing. It's a very different kind of question than you get in a typical undergraduate or even PhD seminar, where the focus is only on the specific material within your discipline, often from people who really want to apply it only within that discipline. Wonderful. Thank you for chatting today. And uh, thank you for founding HDL. <laughs> Thanks. It's been my pleasure.